We've long been told dinosaurs vanished 66 million years ago after a giant asteroid struck Earth. But that story misses an incredible twist. Not every dinosaur disappeared. One branch survived, adapted, and still lives around us today. Among dinosaurs was a group called theropods. They included giants like T-Rex and many small, fast hunters that didn't look like movie monsters at all. T-Rex was powerful, but his huge size required massive amounts of food. T-Rex alone needed hundreds of kilograms of meat per week, so even short disruptions to prey populations were catastrophic. When the asteroid hit and the food chain collapsed, dinosaurs like him could not survive. Smaller theropods had a hidden advantage. Millions of years earlier, some had started to grow feathers. At first, these feathers weren't for flying, but for warmth, balance, and attracting mates. Over countless generations, their bones became lighter, arms stronger, and some eventually glided, then flew. When the mass extinction wiped out the giants, these feathered survivors lived on. They adapted, spread across the planet, and kept evolving. Today, we call them birds. So the pigeon on your balcony or the chicken on your plate, they are living dinosaurs, proof that not all dinosaurs died out. But this is just one of the many myths we grew up believing about dinosaurs. For example, many of us picture Velociraptor the way movies show it, tall as a person and slicing through giant prey with huge claws. But fossils tell a different story. First, the size. The movie monster was made bigger for drama. Real velociraptors were much smaller, about the size of a turkey. Even though their full length was around 1.8 meters, including the long tail, their hips would only reach a person's knee. They were still fast, still dangerous, but not towering hunters. Next, the skin. Movies show Velociraptor with smooth, scaly skin, which looks intimidating on screen. But fossil evidence reveals something unexpected. Paleontologists found quill knobs on their forearm bones, the same bumps that hold feathers in today's birds. That is strong evidence Velociraptor had feathers, not bare reptile skin. These feathers were not for flying, but for warmth, balance and display. So instead of a sleek reptile, imagine a quick, agile predator covered in bristly feathers. Next comes T-Rex. Early scientists pictured it covered in scales like a giant crocodile, and many of us still imagine it that way. Skin impressions from fossils showed scales, so that idea made sense at the time. But in the past 20 years, new discoveries changed the picture. Fossils of young tyrannosaurs and close relatives show signs of feathers that likely helped keep them warm. Movies also show T-Rex sprinting after cars at lightning speed, but biomechanical studies suggest it was too heavy to run that fast without breaking its own bones. Most experts estimate a top speed of around 20 kilometers per hour. At nearly eight to 10 tons in adulthood, running too fast would have generated bone-shattering forces on the legs. Computer simulations of its skeleton show that sprinting like in movies would likely have broken its own limbs. Another myth shows T-Rex as a lone apex predator. But some fossil sites contain multiple tyrannosaurs of different ages buried together, and trackways show groups moving in the same direction. This hints that they may have hunted or traveled in groups. The young ones were faster and more agile, while adults delivered powerful bites, creating a possible coordinated hunting strategy. Now let's look at Triceratops. We often imagine it using its horns mainly to battle T-Rex. The horns could defend against predators, but they likely had other jobs too. Many scientists think Triceratops use them more for social behavior within their own species. They may have locked horns to compete for mates or establish dominance like antelope or deer today. 
Triceratops is usually pictured as a gentle, harmless plant eater. But fossils tell a tougher story. Bones show healed horn breaks, puncture marks in the frill, and injuries that look like the result of combat. Some of these wounds could come from predator attacks, but many seem to have been caused by other Triceratops during fights. Finally, we have Stegosaurus. It is often joked that this dinosaur had a brain the size of a walnut, and older books even suggested it had a second brain near its hips to help control its body. While its brain was small compared to its size, that doesn't mean it was useless. Its nervous system was specialized for survival, coordinating movement, delivering powerful tail swings and processing senses efficiently for its needs. Many people also think the tall plates on Stegosaurus's back acted like thick armor, but CT scan of fossils show they were thin, lightweight and full of blood vessels, which made them poor shields. Their size and inner structure suggest the plates helped with temperature control, either releasing excess heat or absorbing warmth from the sun. They also may have served as display structures, perhaps flushing with color to signal dominance or attract mates. Protection was probably not their main purpose. Dinosaurs didn't truly disappear. They transformed. Feathers, flight and survival rewrote their destiny. The giants fell, but one lineage endures. Look at any bird today, you're seeing a living dinosaur.